Hello and welcome to the second course installment in the small course Learn Julia for Control. And uh, today we will talk about uh, frequency response analysis. So body plots and frequency and functions like that. Uh, but before we start, I wanted to highlight a page from our documentation called uh, Noteworthy Differences from Other Languages. And here we have compiled a bunch of resources and tips that might uh, help you out if you come from another control system analysis package. So here we list things like we use plural words for poles and zeros instead of pole and zero, T0. And something that will be relevant today, uh, functions Bode and Nyquist, they never produce a plot. Instead, you need to call Bode plot and Nyquist plot and so on. All right, with that out of the way, I jump into VS Code and here we have uh, Julia started and we have a small file with code we're going to go through. So I start by loading a control systems base and then to get started, I use we have a module called demo systems and it contains a model, a model called double mass model. So if we look at demo systems, we have a bunch of systems uh, in here that you might find useful. But uh, for today, we'll work with this four state model. Um, it represents two masses that are connected by springs and uh, a spring and a damper. And the output is the position of the, uh, the first mass, the mass that we actuate. So a lot of people, when they get the new system, they would like to have a look at the poles and zeros. We can do that with the function uh, PC map. Uh, before we do that, and we should load the plot package because this is a plot function. So plotting is not automatically loaded when we call using control system space. We have to do that manually. But then we can plot the pole zero map. And here we see poles with crosses and uh, zeros with open loop zeros with uh, uh, circles. Uh, we can also call the function damp report that will print a little table to the terminal uh, with all our poles, so this is a double pole um, with complex conjugated poles and we have two real poles. Plot our damping ratios and time constants and things like that can be quite useful sometimes. If we would look at uh, the root locus, we need to load the full control systems library. So this control systems base contains base functionality. It contains, contains actually most functionality, but control systems include the root locus. And here K is the maximum K will, the maximum gain we compute for. And that gives us the, the root locus. We see that these two poles here, they meet, uh, they go towards uh, this point where they meet and then they go up and end up in the open loop, uh, in the zeros, sorry. If we would like to compute frequency responses, first of all, I would like to show the body plot. Uh, we can just call body plot with a system like so, and the frequency axis is uh, determined automatically. We can also create the vector of frequencies here, uh, W, uh, 200 frequencies, uh, logarithmically spaced, so there is no log space function in uh, Julia. But I have a little snippet, so if I write log and I tab here on log space, it gives me this. And I actually have, I do this so often that I have another frequency vector uh, snippet. So I can immediately create such a frequency vector. All right, and then I can provide uh, the frequency vector as a second argument to my frequency response functions. So the most fundamental function is called frequency, frequency response. That gives us an array and it has size one by one by 200. So that's uh, different from some other languages where the frequency vector is, the frequency dimension is the first dimension. Here it's the last dimension. So in general, if, if P would have been a MIMO system, we would have the number of outputs times the number of inputs times the number of frequencies. If we do have a single input, single output system, and we want we don't want this three-dimensional array. Instead, we want just a vector. We can call the function that ends with a v, so frequency v for vector, 
and then indeed we get the 200 element vector of complex numbers. Uh, so here, here I have a MIMO system. SS RAND just creates a random state space system, say two by three. And then we see the, the resulting array from FreckResp is two by three uh, by 200, because W is 200 long. If we would like to uh, compute the Bode curve, not to display it, we have the function Bode. It returns uh, magnitude and phase. And we have the same here, that mag is a one by one by 200. Um, we can ask for the size and we get the tuple. Or we can ask for the size in a particular dimension. So what's the size in the first dimension and the third dimension? And once again, we can use Bode V with a V in the end and then uh, mag would be a vector. So type of mag is a vector. So that's an alias for an array with one dimension. But if we had used body without the V, now type of mag would be an array uh, with three dimensions. And we see that it has a floating point numbers. All right, we can also uh, pass the frequency vector into body plot and we can specify the title in this case. And we see now the, the body plot has this title here. And underneath the hood, the plotting package called plots.gal is used all throughout the control systems package. So if you would like uh, to know how to style a plot, uh, for instance, the body plot, you go to the documentation for, for Julia plots. So docs.juliaplots.org. And then you find here attributes such as, yeah, there is a long list of attributes here, right? So these apply to all plots in the control system package. All right, we have we can compute the Nyquist curve, then we get a real and imaginary uh, vectors out. And once again, it's one by one by 200. If we want uh, um, vectors, we can either call Nyquist V, and then we have a vector, or we could call if we have this uh, re, that is a three-dimensional array, we could call it vec of re. That also gives us a vector. We could also actually do this syntax. We index then the array at all indices. Uh, and then we get, the, I don't know, the display doesn't work properly here. Then we get the two element vector, all right. We can also plot the Nyquist plot. By default, uh, it gives us something that uh, fits the entire Nyquist plot, usually uh, capped at negative 20 here. If we would like to set the limits here, because this looks, uh, here we have on the x-axis, we have from negative one to one. And here we have from negative 20 to uh, roughly one. We could set the limits of the plot with the y limbs and x limbs keyword arguments and they take uh, tuples and here I also show that we can say ms circles uh, it's, we want a circle at two and that draws us a circle that corresponds to a peak value of the sensitivity function equal to two we can provide several such circles if we want which can be quite useful if you want to meet uh, some uh, design constraints or something like that all right if we had used um, a different plot a plotting backend, so when we use plots.jl, the default plotting backend that we show here uh, is uh, called gr. But we can switch plotting backend. We can use the plotting backend called plotly, for instance. And then if we plot, it will take some time because it will compile the plotly backend. But then we will get a plot in the browser instead. And this plot is interactive. We can see here. Here we display, if we hover over the curve, we display the frequency, which is otherwise hidden in the Nyquist plot, right? And here we can also zoom in and, and stuff like that. So we can see exactly where, which frequency the Nyquist plot uh, cuts this circle, uh, if we would be interested in that. And that's the ms equal to 1.2 circle. All right. So next step, I... Uh, 
create a MIMO system. So here we see that P is now, it has three inputs and two outputs. Um, you can ask for the size of P. So that's the input output size. If I plot the border plot of P, now I'll switch back to the GR back in here. If I plot the border plot now, we see I get this messy plot. Uh, I get a two by three border curves, including face curves. And this can be useful at times, but very often we want to show the singular values of MIMO systems instead. And then we have the sigma plot. It shows the, the singular values. In this case, there are two. If we had had, for instance, a four by four matrix, uh, we would get four singular values instead. And we have the corresponding sigma function that returns the vectors for us. All right. We can also compute DC gains. And in this case now, since it's a four by four matrix, uh, sorry, a four by four system, and uh, we get the four by four matrix as a DC gain. Uh, if we had computed the DC gain of a, a single input, single output system, this would still be a matrix, uh, but it would be a one by one matrix. So it's not, that's not the same as a scalar in Julia. So um, we can ask, type of that's a matrix and what's the uh, type of one that's an integer type of 1.0 that's a float so julia cares about types very often you can use them without thinking about them but sometimes they do matter and uh, here's some, one such case where here you actually get the matrix out all right very often we're interested after we have done some control design to uh, look at the gang of four. So the gang of four just refers to four particular transfer functions uh, relating to the closed loop system. So uh, here I load the control systems package. I have already done it before, but the reason is I want to perform a step response uh, simulation in continuous time. For that I need this package. I once again get our double mass model. I create the PID controller with uh, P, I, and uh, D gains. And here, if I provide TF, I get the um, low pass filter, second order for measurement uh, noise with this uh, time constant. So we can query the doc string for PID by uh, typing the question mark and then typing uh, the name of the function. And we see here that if I provide TF, I get the, this uh, measurement filter. Then I can call the function gang of four with my uh, process and my controller. That returns four transfer functions. We call them S, P, S, C, S, and T. So this would be the sensitivity function. This would be the transfer function from load disturbances appearing at the plant input to the output. This is related to the amplification of measurement noise, and this is the complementary sensitivity function. So I can plot the step response. We haven't talked about uh, time domain simulation today, and that's not the topic of today's talk, but we can just see how it behaves here as step response. We can also, instead of uh, computing the transfer functions with a gang of four function, we can call a gang of four plot, and then we see the four transfer functions plotted like this. And here are the labels are the default uh, labels provided by plot. So they are just Y1 and, and so on. We can turn them off by saying lab equal the empty string. So plots.jl allows something they call uh, magic arguments. So you can guess what uh, <laughs> the keyword argument name is called and it will maybe work. So lab works, label also works. We can say legend equal false and then we don't get any i thought uh, that didn't work we do like that all right so here we see the sensitivity function and by default it shows three bars for yeah uh, levels of the peak of the sensitivity function that you very often want to stay away from we can compute something called the relative gain array that is interesting for uh, uh, MIMO systems. So here I create the Laplace transform S. So that's just the transfer function uh, S over one. Then I create the following uh, matrix of transfer functions P. We can see how it looks. It's a uh, two by two, two 
two by two system with four transfer functions. And now we might be interested in, could we control this system with a decoupled controller? So we, we tune two in independent control loops. And to answer that question, we very often want to compute the relative gain array. So we can do that in the frequency zero, and we see that we get an almost diagonal matrix. So here we can, we can say abs to get the absolute value. Oi. Abs and dot, so we broadcast that function over the matrix, and we see that we have an almost an identity matrix. Very often when I work in the REPL, if I have computed this and I would like to take the absolute value of it, I use the piping syntax like that. Uh, the dot here uh, implies broadcasting and this is the pipe syntax. So it just says take this argument and put it into that function. So that's equivalent to actually writing uh, this. We can also uh, call something called RGA plot, relative gain array plot, and it plots the relative gain array as a function of uh, frequency. So it plots all the individual matrix elements. So we have four matrix elements in the relative gain array, so we get four plots. And we see the relative gain array is more or less constant over frequency in this case. That's not always the case. Just before we finish, some people uh, work a lot with frequency response data. We don't have a frequency response data type in the control system base package, but if you load the control system identification package, uh, we do have such a type. So here I just create the transfer function, a uh, second order transfer function like that. And then I can create such a data object from a transfer function by calling FRD. But, and we see it prints here, the response and the frequency vector. But very often you might have performed some uh, experiment where you excite the system with a particular frequency and then you get the response object, uh, you, you get a value for the frequency response instead of the parametric model like this and then you can create such a data object and they behave like regular uh, LTI systems uh, so you can add them together and so on and perform some uh, feedback interconnections using them and you can of course plot them. But system identification is not the topic for today, we will cover that a bit later. All right, so if you would like to learn uh, more about these things, uh, I suggest checking out the page time and frequency response where you see the documentation for all uh, body, FreckResp, Sigma, Nyquist and so on. And we have a page with plots where you can see uh, the doc strings for the plotting functions. In particular, uh, we have some options for the Nyquist plot has a lot of different options. You can plot different circles and, and things like that. And all of them can, you can decide whether or not to plot in Hertz or in the default is radians per second. You can choose the critical point in Ny Nyquist plot and so on. All right, I think we also display some of the plots down here. Yeah. All right. That was it for today and uh, next time we will talk about time response simulation. So step responses, impulse responses and LSIM. Thank you.